Just to introduce myself and what we're doing, uh, Mikal Havari from a little rock band called Housemark. We used to make really cool arcade games uh, that didn't really sell that well. So last he year I was here talking about what are we going to do next. And then now we have something to show, or we've been showing something for a little bit of while already. Um, where's, this is the clicker? All right, cool. Uh, so let's start off with the, with the audience survey at first. My first question is, how many of you are working on a Battle Royale type game? And probably you guys over here for sure. Okay. Uh, how many of you play these Battle Royale type games? This is a bunch more. Okay, that's pretty good. All right. How many of you think it's a really bad idea to put a Battle Royale game out in this market situation? All right. Yeah, I get the gist. All right. So that's what we're talking about here. This is Battle Royale with cheese. And in this case, it means what does Housemark add to a genre that's already been defined by, if you ask the internet at least, that's what's been done. So Storm Divers um, is the game. We're going to launch with a Battle Royale mod, and it's going to be a lot more than that. But I'll show you some really, really old stuff. So this is from early 2015. Um, we got the first pitch for the game from um, internal, from all, all the game pitches that we have have come from, from our employees. Uh, so this is actually from Mikko Erola, one of our concept artists who was still working there at that point. And uh, when we all saw it, it was very, it's like a wow situation. So yeah, the, the name has changed. That's what this is indicating here, but we'll get to that in just a bit. So what really started off the pitch was trying to define what we're trying to do. And at that point, Battle Royale was a very, very small niche genre, which sounds crazy, but it was. There was only a few titles out there. Um, H1Z1, you know, King of the Kill at least was coming out. And, and there was a lot of this mod scene stuff that probably you guys, you guys played. But these are the defining factors that we wanted to put into this game, uh, which was, uh, we were defining it Smash Brothers meets Hunger Games, and of course, the movie, the Japanese movie Battle Royale was one of the bigger influences on what we wanted to do. So yeah, uh, rules of the games is that the, you battle to death, only one survives, that's pretty simple. And if you have teams, then that means more than one, but still, same rules apply. And uh, the environment closes in. It doesn't mean that it has to be a defined sort of thing, but it's, it's just as, as the player amount decreases, you got to work with the environment to keep things chaotic. So we wanted people to be always moving and, and always looking for a safe place, which really didn't exist. And, and our addition to this formula at that point was defined as events, in-game events of just shit going on. And uh, so we wanted these random events, all events are random, to really define what are the rules and confines uh, that the players then experience on top of the base formula. So that's where it kind of started from. And now, uh, to demonstrate the very early uh, pitch and idea, and by the way, nobody has seen this outside of our company, so bear, bear in mind that not everything is kosher or on par to what you expect from, from game pitches, but this is a very experimental thing. So we just wanted to show you what we started with in 2015. And this has sound, so we'll see how it plays. Welcome to Killing Games, the most brutal game on earth. Let's get right down to the business. Here we have the arena in red in the middle and obstacle courses on the way to the arena. And the last person to the arena will be killed. Eight players, you're the guy with the red bandana, and the first guy's already out. Too bad, so sad, but now he's a villain, and he's out to get you in a monster form. First event we have is called the Big Gun, so everybody's blasting with rockets all around the playing field, and eventually what happens is the second guy is down. Team up. Teams of three, find your friends, get close to them to get that defense buff, and then go hunt out the other team and try to kill them as fast as you can. Remember, there's already two guys as monsters on the playing field at this moment. Lasers. We're gonna add little hazards like lasers, which are basically red beams of light coming from the sky trying to get you. Look around, don't stay in one place or you might get killed. Eventually, the third guy's gonna get killed, so co-op is off, things change, work with it. 
Next, next thing we're gonna have is the volcano. So be on the lookout. Huge mountain grows from the middle of the playing field and the lava starts spewing everywhere. The surroundings are gonna be filled with lava, so you have to get to the higher ground, jump around on these little rocks, and eventually fourth guy gets killed off and there's four more players left to fight for their lives. Another hazard, missiles, is introduced at this point. All you see are these targets moving around you, and if you stay still for too long, they will kill you as a missile is heading for your head. But wait, let's recap a little bit. You have monsters behind you, you have missiles, you have lasers, and you're climbing a huge volcano with lava everywhere. Crazy, right? And again, we team up. So, two more guys on each team get together. You're lucky, you find the guy next to you, bromance is in the air, go out to kill the other two guys. Now, what happens is there are two more guys left, co-op is off. That bromance didn't last for too long, but hey, it's your time to kill that friend of yours. You happen to be a lucky guy, and you actually anticipated this, push him off the cliff, down to the fiery pits below, and this means you get the final kill. Good job, you win the game! And that has been another episode of the killing games. There you go. Round of applause. So, uh, anybody raise your hand if that is a battle royale game to you? Maybe? Yes? A little bit? Is it different? Then, okay, okay. So that's what we felt as well. At this point, we were just looking to transition to, you know, Things that we haven't done uh, at all or in a long time, like third-person perspective, multiplayer-centered games. And we wanted to really bring a lot of that arcade heritage that we, we actually know how to do. Um, so that was the barrage of events and, and all that stuff. But this has been very interesting um, a road because from that we, of course, then uh, started pitching it, started prototyping it, and little by little it's now devolved. Um, into something that's very different or maybe still has that thin red line that we're trying to follow. Um, I'll give you an example of, of what kind of events we tried to think about early on. So we want to take you on this mysterious island and it's going to be uh, like an island like every other Battle Royale game. Uh, but still, uh, at this point, we felt like we could do something kind of different. So we started designing uh, really cool environments and thinking of uh, how would these environmental effects then uh, change the sur surroundings that you're playing in? So imagine that you're in a uh, grotto. There's you know different planes of the level. Uh, clearly, the design is going for something that you can uh, jump and even jetpack up and maybe look down and and go through these places. Or it's clearly it's it's difficult to to maybe see your enemies in a line of sight just from from. Um, uh, happenstance. Uh, actually, it reminds me of a very Destiny type of a crucible level, to be honest. Uh, so, now that we have this environment that we want to create, uh, we started thinking, what could you do then to just totally change that? Uh, really just take the basics and then and try to flip it over. So, we came up with, this is one of the ideas, flush the toilets. Yes, that was really the name for the event. Uh, but basically, you introduce water into a cave system or any open system, for example, and the physics take over and you end up pushing all the players to a single uh, central location. Of course, that makes sense from, a, from any uh, Battle Royale perspective. You want to push players together because then they'll be killing more. Uh, but that was just one of the ideas. We want to do environmental uh, level design as well. In the end, that ended up being a very, um, you know, a big task, and currently we've been focusing on a lot of these events that are viable throughout levels, not just in a single location. But it gives you an idea of what kind of environmental effects we're going for. So, let's show the game as it is currently. You come in on a drop pod, this is a very sci-fi environment. Uh, you have three classes to choose from, but every class has a glider, so you're always flying, you can always do that. Uh, we have a lot of those environmental effects. Uh, wind um, goes well with the name, Storm Divers. Uh, you're shooting a lot of people, but yeah, there you go. That's the tornado event that we're showing. But you have a lot of these skills as well. So the three classes have skills like camouflage and things that relate to your movement. So for example, have a jetpack and fly up in the sky and get some more verticality. 
slightly different. But yeah, especially the tornado, that's really a, a thing that we're, we're trying to focus on now to really create a differentiated play field. And uh, it's just one of those things that doesn't always come across. We've gotten a lot of shit on YouTube. Don't always listen to all the comments. They don't know what's going on half the time. But then it's your job to inform and really get the people on board by letting them know what are the things that you're really working towards and, and trying to create that's, that's different. And, and we see this as our first multiplayer game, of course, meaning that there's a lot of opportunities for us to do with it. But uh, this is a, my, my personal uh, way of describing it is it's, uh, it's uncharted, but in multiplayer. So we just want a lot of crazy shit to happen all the time. Um, yeah, that was, that was top secret. Not so secret anymore. And uh, we know that it's an uphill battle, but we're definitely up for the challenge. And in the end, uh, we want to bring not only what you've seen here now, but also the things that make it housemark. And as there are a lot of ideas that we've had before in the past, we think that there's a lot of things that we can actually draw from as inspiration going forward. But yes, it's, it's a, it's, we're going from a niche arcade market into probably the, the most toughest market uh, in the past decade, which is now Battle Royale. So let's see how that goes. Thank you.